Hey everyone, welcome back to Dev Parkour. In this video, I want to show you how you can set up two-factor authentication in your web apps. I'm specifically going to be using uh, C Sharp because uh, one of the projects that I'm going to be working on here coming up is a C, is a C Sharp project, and one of the requirements is that it uses two-factor authentication. Um, the library that I'm using is not actually a Google uh, created library, even though it's called Google Authenticator. Um, it is something that was created by someone else, uh, but it works with Google Authenticator. Now, you can certainly learn about how Google Authenticator and, and other tools like it uh, work. Uh, it's really not terribly complicated, uh, but I didn't want to go through that and implementing it in a web app all in the same video. Um, if you want to hear more about how the algorithm actually works, go ahead and leave a comment down below and I'll, I'll slate it in for a uh, future video. Uh, but in this video, it's just about how to uh, basically create two pages, one to uh, register your two-factor authentication app on your phone and one to actually use it to authenticate. And really all it does is when you've successfully authenticated, it says, hello, hey, you've successfully authenticated. That's it. I did nothing more complicated than that. Um, the other thing that I want to mention is uh, this video is edited a little bit differently. So if you like the format, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Leave a thumbs up and let me know that you like uh, where I'm going with this. Um, and if you have comments or questions or you know think there are other things that I, I could do differently, uh, go ahead and let me know about them as well. Uh, with that, let's roll the video. All right, so like I said, we're going to be using a project called Google Authenticator. Uh, it is not a Google-sponsored project, but it is designed to work with Google Authenticator. And I'm going to be creating a new C-sharp MVC uh, project uh, through Visual Studio. It's going to be ASP.NET Core, basically the, the default uh, settings. And now we have our project. All right, so you'll notice that it, it does create a, a bunch of uh, razor pages for this project. Uh, that's not an issue. Um, you can do this either with uh, MVC or with razor pages. So here I'll show how to use razor pages. I'll just create a new one to be our, our registration page, uh, just to register a, a um, two-factor authentication app. We'll call it register.cshtml. And what we're going to be doing is uh, first we have to install the NuGet package, and then we'll just copy and paste, basically copy and paste some some boilerplate code from the wiki. But let's first run this install package command from the package manager console uh, there at the bottom in Visual Studio. Usually takes a couple seconds to spin up, but then you just do install dash package, and then in this case, Google Authenticator. Just a few seconds and it installs, and now we're ready to go. So here in, in register, uh, .cshtml, we have uh, some code that we want to paste in. So let me just copy that from the Google Authenticator project wiki. You can see here it doesn't do anything too terribly crazy. Uh, it's just basic. Basically uh, set up two-factor authentication and turn it into to a QR code. So let's see what that looks like. So I'm actually not going to dump it into register.cshtml. 
I'm going to go to register.cshtml.cs, uh, which if you're familiar with um, old school ASP.NET, you can call it code behind. Uh, and now we'll move some of this code around, put the usings up at the top. And now let's create some properties um, so that we can uh, basically generate this information uh, on the back end and then send it up to the, the Razor page. So QR code URL and manual entry code will take the place of these, these strings that were in the example. Uh, the QR code URL is the URL to, to show the QR code. Um, and then the, the manual entry URL is if your phone can't do a QR code, uh, you can type in the, the code manually. Since the QR code is a, a URL to an image, we can just put it in a in an, a, an image tag uh, at model dot QR code URL, and then the uh, the the manual code is just a, a string. So let's stick it in a p tag, and now let's run it. All right. So if we go to our register page you'll see it loads a QR code. Now one thing that we want to change is if I refresh the page it generates a new QR code every single time I refresh. And that's because we're basically generating a new uh, secret key every single time this page loads. But what we actually want to do is save this with a particular user. So let's start by changing this this hard-coded uh, example email address and We'll just create a new property for this. Let's call it email address. And I'll actually implement that property as well. And I'll kind of breeze through some of this. Because um, what we actually want to do is rather than just every time the page loads, we generate the QR code. We want to ask for the user's email address and then um, generate a code specific to that email address. And of course, we actually want to save this to the database. Um, and we'll want this database table to look something like, let's call it user. Um, we'll give it an ID. We want to store the email address and, and the key that we're generating on line 24 here. Well, really, this is not the most secure way of generating a key, it's not really cryptographically sound, so uh, let's do that as well. We'll just drop in some code to generate a cryptographically sound string, uh, fix up the usings, and then instead of doing this GUID.new GUID stuff, uh, we'll call this new function, uh, which is called generate random string, and it takes a length. And uh, we'll, we'll keep it uh, at 10. I think that's what's required to be the key for all this two-factor authentication stuff. So now, we also want to be able to save this to the database. So We'll add Entity Framework Core. We'll uh, add the service in startup.cs and do some configuration to, uh, I'll be using a MySQL database or actually MariaDB. Um, and you can see here, I, I always have to look this up every single time. Uh, I'm copying and pasting some of this information uh, just so I get it right. And most of this is just boilerplate. Uh, if you've done Entity Framework Core, before this should all be familiar. Uh, if you aren't familiar with Entity Framework Core and want me to, to, to do a video uh, specifically on what I'm doing here and why I'm why I'm doing all the little pieces that I'm doing, uh, this is actually a fairly simple example so it, it, this wouldn't be a terrible uh, way to go. But uh, leave a comment down below and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, kind of explain this footage in, a, in another video. Uh, so here I'm creating my, my database 
uh, context, uh, creating a user class to store uh, the the user information, and like we like I mentioned before, it's an ID, an email address, and the key. That's the those are the only things that I'm storing in this user table. A bit of hand waving later, and now we can actually save this information. Uh, this is on the on post. We can save this information um, in the database. Uh, but in order to do that, we actually need a reference to the context. One way to do that would be through the the um, a uh, constructor on this class. Uh, but since I don't actually need it in the get, I only need it uh, on post. Um, there's actually a in my opinion, a, a faster, a, a better scoped way to do this. We use the from services attribute on a on a, on a parameter to this method. Uh, give it the type app db context and give it a name db, and then I can use db inside of this on post method. So all, all we're going to do is uh, create a new user, save it to the collection. And that's about it. Where ID will create a new GUID, that's totally fine. Uh, for email address, we'll use the email address from the email address property, which uh, we'll get from a form field. And then finally, the key, which we're generating here on, now it's line 25. Fix up our syntax. And make sure all our usings are in order, uh, which they are here now, but now we're getting an error because they're not uh, over on the DB context side. All right, now our usings are in order. And finally, we have to add a connection string. So let's do that. Nothing crazy, it's just a connection to uh, localhost. Um, my standard app user and the database we'll be using is one that's specific to this project. And finally, we actually uh, initialize the database, create a migration, uh, run it against the database. Database is all ready to go. And now we should be able to run the app. But first, let's take a look at what's actually in the database. Uh, so I use Heidi SQL to connect to MariaDB on my local Windows machine. Now we can go down to the database that was created for this uh, for this project. There's our users table, and it's got our database columns, and as you might imagine, no data because we haven't saved any users yet. Now let's set up the form on the on the front end. Uh, basically, what we'll do here is if uh, if there is no QR code URL, uh, we'll show a uh, A little form uh, asking for the user's email address. If we do have a QR code URL, then we'll show the QR code URL. Basically the same page as before. But here, we're just using some HTML helpers, showing a label, showing the editor for, and then a little submit button. Let's wrap it in a form. Uh, that'll just post back to the same page. Make sure that it's post, not get. And now we should be able to go back to our register page. It asks for our email address. We can type in an email address.
And now we actually run into an error here, and that's because I missed something. I missed a couple things. Uh, one thing is that I didn't actually save the user to the database. That's not what's causing this this error, but that's something that I noticed while I was fixing this up that uh, it would have bitten me later. What I need to do is add from form, add the from form attribute here on this this property because it's something that we expect to get populated from the request. Uh, everything else can get populated from the from the code behind and then the razor page can use it, but this is something that we're expecting to get populated from the form. So it needs that from form attribute. Now, when we click the register button, we get a QR code. And if you were to scan this QR code, you would see all the information that I put in the back end. Uh, test two factor, and it should actually show my email address as well. Um, obviously, that Q, that QR code won't get you into anything because that's specific to my local dev environment. So not a security issue. But now let's build a little uh, test page uh, to kind of mimic logging in. So all we'll do is uh, basically just indicate if you successfully logged in, we'll say congratulations, you're logged in. Now, I do want to make this page have a little bit different route. Um, basically what we'll do is we'll specify the email address as part of the URL. So instead of just slash login, we'll do slash login slash email address. Of course, in a real scenario, you probably would have just slash login and then you know have a form field to, to ask for the email address and, and that sort of thing. Uh, but for this demonstration, this is easy enough. Now write some, some code behind, create a little form uh, to ask for the code. and give it a submit button and now in the uh, on the, the on post we obviously need to get the database so that we can pull the user out so get the the first user based on the provided email address that email address that's provided as part of the URL uh, if we get a user back then we do some more code that uh, we'll copy from from the wiki uh, basically just validate the two-factor uh, code and again since code comes from a form we need that from form attribute on line 16 now we can add some logic so that if there's a successful result we say congratulations you're in Otherwise, we just show the form again. So let's see what this looks like. All right, so we'll go to slash login. Obviously, nothing comes back because this page requires an, an email address. So slash login slash my email address. Now we can type in a code. Uh, I'm actually looking at my phone right now uh, so that I can type in uh, the code that I'm getting from the Google Authenticator app, which is 521606. I click Submit, and in just a second, it says, congratulations, you're in. Now, if I go back and I type in something that's totally the wrong code, you know, security is important to test the negative examples. One, two, three, four, five, six is definitely not a valid code. So I click submit, you'll notice that it doesn't change. And that, that's because I, I didn't really have good error checking. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Uh, click subscribe and click that notification bell so you'll be notified when other videos come out. I really appreciate that. This channel wouldn't be here if it, if it weren't for all of you wonderful people out there. Uh, and if you have any comments, questions, topics for future videos, go ahead and leave a comment down in the comment section below. I really enjoy reading those and, and responding to everybody who, who writes. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.